Get some oxygen into these pots. So glad that the weather forecast held up. You know, when it's bad weather, week after week after week, you can pretty much guarantee that the weather is bad and it's gonna stay bad. You can rely on the forecast, but the moment you see some kind of sunshine, some kind of reprieve, it's almost like, nah, it's a fluke. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> But here we are on schedule. Well, I would have liked to have flushed a week ago, but I was very, very concerned that I wasn't going to have better night temperatures. We were still in the single digits. And while most of these orchids are inside during those single digit nights, the indoor space doesn't go very, very much warmer either. 14 degrees Celsius has been my lowest this winter so far. That's not good when you're dealing with warm to hot growers. A cool grower, yeah, they can take it, but you know, if I'm gonna do this, then I'm going to do this with all of them and not start selecting which one comes out. Who are you? Oh yeah, okay, you can come, you can go, because that's not how they are set up in the grow space. It is so good to have you on the patio. It is sunny, it's a bit blustery. I have the umbrella up, but you know what? It is warm. Short sleeves are a go, at least for this task. What we're going to do afterwards when it gets a little bit chillier again, oh well, we mummify ourselves. But for now, enjoying the moment and flushing the orchids. I'm not gonna be able to flush all of them as I would like to because I have to be careful with my RO water. I do have a hundred liters that I can play with as a reserve behind me. But, you know, for the first flush, uh, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. I need to get two more Lelia Perparatas. They also need flushing. I'll be right back. Berghäuserie. All the way to the top. And Berghäuserie Striata. Oop, we need to top that one up a bit more. My Perparatas have been outside the past two nights. They can take a little bit of a cool down at night compared to the others. The days are starting to steady out at 19 degrees Celsius. I'm hoping that that is sufficient for them to warm up during the day enough in the protected blooming alley that they can handle the cold. Everybody is looking a little bit patético. So much more obvious when you see deficiencies and the cold damage from previous years. Now this year's cold damage is also happening here on my Fushu Glory. Yeah, oh dear, oh dear. But they're pretty much pest free. I saw on my Sunya Green, which I flushed earlier, I saw that that one had some scales, crawlers, that's been dealt with. But what we're going to do now, if you are so inclined to stick around and if you're interested, we're gonna have a look at some of the ones that are on the table, see how they are doing, see what's going on and do some grooming. First of all, let's take a moment to enjoy some Dendrobium Roy Tokanaga blooms. These have been opening up indoors. I haven't moved the orchid outside. While the spikes were forming, I did come out to dust the leaves, etc. But since then, nothing. You can see there's some dust on there, so we'll deal with that. Also, because I need to get her out of the sun right now. The sun is not high enough in the sky for the umbrella to protect them all. As it's moving across, the sun angle is still penetrating into the space. So I have to be a little bit careful. While it's blustery, these orchids haven't seen that much light. My Brostechia has come out quite often, but still, direct sun, never. Not during such warm temperatures. So yeah, anyway, let's get to some grooming and clean some leaves first. Just a little bit. Ooh, uh, just a little bit. Ooh, uh, a little bit more. There's a lot of uh, deficiency on my Roy Tokonaga. I can see that, you know, magnesium is a thing, the lack thereof. We'll see if we can take care of that during the growing season. I'm gonna have to really um, 
amp up the production of my RO system because soaking, then flushing through, and then filling up the reservoir with whatever is needed, depending on the orchid, that is definitely very, very water consuming. So I'm already making a list. Well, let's just say I'm making a list for those that need it the most. Roy Tokunaga being one of them because she is growing a new growth. Well, has completed a new growth right here during the winter. Very happy with this compared to the circumstances she was dealing with. This one was also grown during the winter, but you can see that, you know, October, November, December wasn't as great. And then the next bleed started and it is much, much better. So at least there's that Roy Tokunaga and the roots, ugh, always an issue. So you see, here's another growth that is not looking too keen. I checked for mealybugs because this could be mealybug symptoms, but there was nothing there. So this is just cold that made the leaves curl up while the growth was growing. I hope all of this is in focus because the sun is blinding out my screen. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm loving it. <laughs> what I want to do with my, ooh, careful, careful, you see? I got a root tip here. There is activity on my Darwinara. My Darwinara charm, blue charm. This spike formed during the winter, but it never bloomed for me. It just frazzled out. So I want to just take that off, but it got a flush today. Maybe I could give it another glug before I put it back. Because like I said, I'm being sparing with my RO water. I've selected candidates that really, really, really need it. The ones that have been coming out on a regular basis during the winter, they've been getting their treatment. I wasn't so concerned because they were coming outside and getting aired out. So these are the ones that are super, super desperate. Sorry for any background noise. The east side is what it is at the moment. Here is my Dawiana. Hasn't bloomed for me. Grew really, really well. You wouldn't think it because, you know, dum dum here. One very hot day in 2022 and boom, fried the leaves. And yes, you can see natural fertilizer, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you want to take it. I get little birds coming in to visit Ciliano. They fly through the grow space. They have a trajectory, come in through the living room, terrace door, fly to Ciliano, pick away at the seeds that he doesn't want. And then they fly out through the grow space when the terrace door is open and they leave their dropping. Sometimes they spend the night because I have to close the door even if it is daylight because I'm trying to keep the temperature as high as possible through the night and afternoon temperatures start to drop. So I close the door, it's daylight and sometimes they kind of get stuck in there. And then there's a little bit silly because they can't figure out to go back out through the living room terrace door. It's, it's really silly, but anyway, so they leave their droppings and they've got a lot of droppings also in the pots. There's a lot of bird droppings. Never mind, it's all part and parcel, you know. If I haven't fertilized my Dawiana all these months, my birds have. I say my birds, they're not my birds, but the birds have. Now, let me find another one that we haven't looked at for quite some time and it needs a good clean. And that is my Dinard Blue Heaven. I know I'm always in the shadow. This is a working terrace at the moment. <laughs> Darwinara Blue Heaven hasn't really seen that much light. I haven't brought it out much during the winter months. So it needed a desperate, desperate flush. It's doing okay. I'm not seeing that much deficiency on the newer leaves. Anything that's going funky in the back, all right, whatever. You know, part and parcel of what's going on, but it's looking pretty good. And I'm always confident that I, if I can keep my Darwinara indoors without that much light, it's pretty much in snooze mode. And then once things improve outside, it will wake up, but I don't see any new growth. And you can see the birds have done a little bit of their business <laughs> in the pot. You see that I'm out of the shade. Yes. She ranks right at the top 
right on the top shelf. That's where she lives. So the birds are always on the top shelf as well. And sometimes the little blighters do try to get at my tags. <laughs> but luckily my tags are pretty much bound to the pots. So there's not really that I'm going to lose the tags. I don't know which orchid it belongs to, thankfully. Keeping the atmosphere positive, one of the positive things about having cold winters, you start to recognize which orchids can handle it and which don't. So natural selection starts to make the collection a little bit sturdier, a little bit stronger because I've lost quite a few orchids. But uh, you can also say it's a good thing because now we don't have to do so much dividing. I can grow some specimens, whereas before I would have had to divide them. And you can also see which candidate really, really cannot stand the cold and gets cold damage. Like my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday here. I'm seeing some remnants of scale issues there. I don't know if that was visible. Those are dead, but they still leave their marks. And there's a little bit of... Is that in shot? Yeah, you see that there? Oh, we got to take care of that. I don't know if that's dead or alive, but we can deal with it and let there be no doubt. It could also be remnants of bird droppings because the rest of the orchid is clean. But you know what? Now we're at least certain that we've dealt with it. I want to show you my Epidemron Stamfordianum, which I thought was a goner. I have these two pots to clean from the Perparatas. I'll be doing that shortly. I've been cleaning all the masks of all the orchids that are on the table here. Very, very happy to see this orchid alive. And finally, I know, I know, but for me, she's doing well. Considering what I had two years ago, this is a copper victim. I didn't expect her to make it, but even though the roots are looking nasty at the surface, they're absolutely fine and they are functioning which is the most important thing. Unfortunately, this root never continued growing throughout the summer, but I'm super pleased that this orchid has given a great growth. You will see that there are some markings. I hope you can see that in the screen. And it's going to start to get the same spotting as when I got the orchid from an order that was, I was just not pleased with, but at least this orchid is still with me despite the source where it came from, whereas other orchids in that order left the collection very, very quickly. Others are leaving the collection bit by bit. And well, thankfully, despite also the copper issue, this orchid is still around. I was hoping, hoping that it would not go like the others would. So thankfully, I've still got my Epidendrum Stamfordianum. If it was trying to bloom this year, it's going to not happen. We're going to grow this orchid onto some form of strength before we see those gorgeous blooms again. Unfortunately, that pitting, this thing here, that's why I started with the copper. Let's see that leaf right there. It was much, much worse, but it's not going to go away. Something with the orchid. And I don't think it's a virus because the blooms, when it bloomed, they were absolutely fine and beautiful. So we're gonna put her into a protective spot and I'm just going to show you one more or yeah, just one more because same thing happened here with my Gold Coast and you're gonna see that I've, you know, got a root in the reservoir. Is that visible right there? Yeah, there's a root in the reservoir, which of course, if I put the orchid on the table to flush, cracks the root. Not bothered because the tiny new growth that grew throughout the winter right here, it has to develop its root system. And well, other roots are absolutely fine in the pot. But this one also did not appreciate the colder temperatures. So I've got pitting and nastiness. But you know what? I wonder if I made a mistake when I was running lights and some form of heat just to get, take the edge off of the air. I wonder if this orchid is just one of those that just gets nasty leaves and they don't stay shiny. I don't know. I know that my damage here, this is the cold. This happens and this is the latest growth from last year. Unfortunately, in my circumstances, this happens with my Gold Coast. 
And of course, cracking a root is never nice, but flushing was more important. And actually, before we go, you know what? I'm looking for one orchid to show you, and I know I put it on the table, and now I've just had a major brain fart. <laughs> a total senior moment here. I can't find her. The Gold Coast reminded me of that orchid, and I forfeited the roots at the base, and she was such a beautiful repot in the summer of 2022. One of the most satisfying, easiest, quickest repots with a lot of roots and a lot of roots coming down at the bottom of the pot. And she's done it again. And I was about to say, well, how am I going to flush this orchid? Ah, never mind. I just put her on the surface and risked any kind of roots that were now circling down at the base of the pot. Do you think I can find that orchid? I'm going to have to make some space. I'm going to clean out those masks and I'm going to start putting orchids back into their mask. And let's see if I can find her. My mind has just gone blank and my eyes don't seem to be functioning either, so I'll be back. Okay, so let's support that beautiful sheath of the Verkhoise. I've got 200 parts per million only of fertilized water that goes into the reservoir. And the same I will do for the Verkhoise. So we've got Verkhoise Stirata and the classic Verkhoise, both have a sheath and both shall be supported in the hopes that we get blooms, in the hopes that I've done my job, in the hopes that all the schlepping around back and forth in the past months huh, will bless us with some blooms for three weeks. <laughs> Four months of schlepping, three weeks of joy, but well worth it if they come out. And if not, at least we get a root system anyway. I shall continue hunting for that orchid, put all these orchids back in their mask. Those that are not in active growth get plain water, and those that are in active growth or in sheath, they will get 200 parts per million of fertilized water, which is not the quantity I use throughout the growing season. That's where I start to differentiate based on the size of the orchid and activity. But right now, just to keep things, you know, going, keep it moving, we're going to go with 200 and everybody will be satisfied and I'll be back when that elusive orchid comes back into my hands or I may have just dreamt it who knows <laughs> I've been anticipating this day for so long I may have just dreamt it <laughs> you know what they say if you build it they will come well if you dream it maybe dreams come true it feels like it today The elusive orchid, I present. <laughs> Golf green hair pig. Oh, you see that? I thought it was the other orchid that I was looking at. The Skinnery Lodigesii, but nope, that's why I couldn't find it. I was always looking at Skinnery. But here we are, Golf green hair pig, root network through the wazoo. It's probably destroyed by now because I placed it on the table, which pretty much cracks the roots but that's okay it's a great sign roots are fine in the pot a new root system is also somewhere on its horizon so <laughs> oh my goodness like i said brain fart even the orchid was completely wrong but i'm happy golf green hair pig didn't have a great blooming for me this past blooming cycle too cold also too humid so the petals were very very quickly translucent the two of them was not a great combination but it's okay but in a way you know she bloomed she's healthy she's fine and as per usual yes she has deficiencies i'm i i don't actually let's just say freak out about that anymore i know it's part and parcel of what i deal with but the orchid at least was happy enough to bloom only the conditions made it a very short blooming Meanwhile, thankfully, I can say that the growth is fine and we are going to have another new growth out of this gorgeous orchid when the growing season begins. So all this 
Uh, it's aesthetics. I can work with that. Hopefully a little bit more Epsom salts during the season and she'll recover. Anyway, I have a few more things to do here, but I think you get my drift. Pretty much trying to make sure that all the orchids that desperately need it get a flush and tomorrow I'll be flushing a little bit more because, you know, I have to restore the reserves of my RO water. C'est la vie, but it is a beautiful day and I'm so thankful that you joined me on the patio. Really appreciate a like, <laughs> just for the sake of adding to the beauty of a day like this. <laughs> Give this video a like, please. And how about subscribing to the channel because this is only a fraction of the collection that I have. Everybody that's been following me up until now are probably wondering what about the rest of them. Thank you to everyone that knows my collection very, very well. Your support over the years has been super, super appreciated. So if I see any new names in the comments, that would be amazing. Thank you for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.